So, friends, we have discussed a varial, various factors that determine or influencing or important for photogrammetry, especially aerial photogrammetry. And we have discussed the scale as one important and how the scale varies with the terrain condition that we have tried with a few examples we have realized. We will continue our discussions on now the flight planning and further the aerial photographs with respect to whether the camera axis is vertical, incline, high angle, low angle, etc. Now, so camera axis, optic axis orientation is an important factor that result and influence determine our studies. If a camera axis is vertical, this is the kind of photograph we get. Carefully see, these are all more or less equal, all equally spaced. Whereas, if we have an oblique that is low angle with respect to this, with respect to a vertical axis, this is a low angle photograph. Now, you see, as you move away from here, the photograph size or area covered accordingly the scale, other related problems increases. If this is very high, this is high angle, if this is a low angle or this is a very high angle then with respect to this, then you see the kind of photograph we get. So, throughout the photographs scale varies. Therefore, it is not preferred to have this kind of photograph, only this kind. But during flight due to unfavorable atmosphere condition, the plane may tilt or move like this, then we may have, see, if a plane is perfectly like this, yes, this is vertical. If a, the plane tilt itself, then we have this kind of tilted photograph develop. Now, ideally, if it is a low angle, still it is possible to manage this part of the photograph. Example, if I have a vertical photograph, this is the area I have covered. If this is the oblique photograph, I miss out this. This much part of the ground only covered and only this part of this is useful. This part of the photograph is not useful. Plus, I miss this information. At the most, if I angle, if I change, at least this much area I will be able to photograph. This photograph I can make use. Therefore, the angle of tilt is very important. We have vertical photograph, oblique photograph, our complexity varies with the kind of oblique photography. There are again low oblique and high oblique photography. Just now we mentioned these are another important factor. Again, depends on this, our various other activities. Now, what is the stereoscopic coverage? We study the photograph. In the three dimension, we have to study. We use an instrument called stereoscope. People also call mirror stereoscope, a pocket stereoscope. Nowadays, we have digital like uh, photography. We can analyze that is uh, like a photogrammetry that is uh, in all respect similar to satellite image. We use there. Now, in all this photograph, essential factor is an overlap. To examine the earth surface in a three dimension, aerial photography is normally flown with a 60 percent forward lap. Overlap is required. If this is one photograph, if this is another photograph, there is no overlap. On the other hand, if this is one photograph and this is another photograph, there is an overlap. This overlap portion is very important for us to get a three dimensional view. Therefore, we while taking the photograph take care that we have this much of percentage of overlap. Also, if this is our area, survey area, I cover this. If I next cover like this, this much area, I may miss out 
therefore again I have to see overlap this is called side overlap this is a forward overlap I have one photograph here this is another photograph here this is another photograph here this is a forward overlap this is a side overlap why this is I am taking the photograph of the ground photograph of the I am covering this much ground area covering the photograph due to wind or some other effect I my flight direction get deviated therefore although originally I wanted to cover this much area but because of this deviation I may ab not able to cover therefore side lap or side overlap also I provide so that I do not miss out so much of deviation may not be possible means may not occur but a slight deviation is there there is a possibility of missing that area therefore we also use generally 25 to 30 percent of side overlap 50 to 60 percent longitudinal or forward overlap is provided so that not only all the area effectively we cover additional advantages are there one is at the three dimensional view second we do not miss out third is there are various aspects I mentioned shortly why overlap is essential etc yes this is essential requirement from the photography photogrammetry mapping to obtain data both on planimetry and heights using stereoscopy principle I have to get a map like planimetric view also I have to get a stereoscopic means a three dimensional observation and I need to have this kind of overlap is required. Now stereoscopic viewing also helps in interpretation as the model is viewed in a three dimension stereoscopic observation is important to observe three dimensionally. When I have a three dimensional elevation building elevation or depression or valley etc I should able to quantify for that a three dimensional picture is required for that stereoscopic viewing that is simultaneously observing an object however I is able to capture three dimensional because I have two eyes to focus on a given point simultaneously. So when I observe a particular point from two different lenses simultaneously I am able to capture three dimensional views therefore stereoscopic viewing is important and then we have to have an overlap for that. Now what is exactly photographic overlap say for example when this is my camera position this is the area I capture when my camera position is here this is the area I capture third this is the area I capture now this is the one first photograph this is the second photograph this part is the overlap that is the effective area for me to study and understand the three dimensional view and quantitative measurements etc. So this is overlap this is forward overlap say 60 percent we provide side overlap is this one this is one photograph this is another photograph this is the side overlap so this is also generally 30 percent people on an average 20 to 40 percent we say depends on weather condition difficult to generalize but ideally 30 percent is most of the cases they adopt so this is a side overlap is required yes the why the reason to tie different prints together I have taken several photographs several photography I do not know they miss out when I have to perfectly match them perfectly if I have to match them if this happens it is not perfectly matched to tie them perfectly if I have overlap perfectly I am able to match it so tie different prints together accurately it is desirable that the principal point of each the principal point of each photograph this is the principal point just now we have mentioned these are the points on the photography we have called here sorry 
in the first photograph I have said uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. so this if you do CL mark this and this is the principal point and that principal point should be seen in several photographs accurately then I can stitch different photographs and get a three dimensional view so yes I have to have see this principal point this is one photograph this is another photograph the same principal point if I can see in both the photograph example this is overlap I may have the principal point of this photograph here principal point of this photograph here in both the images I have to see that is in the overlap part if it is more than 50 percent the principal point here and here both can be visible in the same photograph. The distortion caused by the lens that is possible often and by the tilt just now we have mentioned vertical however vertical photograph there may be slight tilt during flight therefore possible tilt and the relief displacement what the relief displacement is is if this is the point this is the photograph and this is the point I have photographed the position of this photograph is here the same point this is here see bottom and top of a tree is found at different places this this change in position of a given object in the photograph we call relief displacement this point displacement is due to relief if the object is here it is like this if a object is like this the displacement is like this if the object is very close to here like to this displacement is minimum means the object farther and farther away from the principal point relief displacement increases similarly terrain is highly undulating very high very low then also displacement there is a high so this kind of relief displacement occurs in aerial photography and are more pronounced in the outer these are more common in the outer part of the photograph than in the central part of the photograph if I have a overlap and the central part of the photograph I can use where relief displacement is minimum that gives me more accurate result than without much overlap etc. So this is important the outer part of the photograph than the near center of the each photograph if the overlap is more than 50 percent these distortions and displacement can be minimized or possible to overcome in order to view the pairs of photograph stereoscopically simultaneously if I observe two objects, same photograph with overlap from two different eye stereoscope is a kind of instrument like this I have an observation here this is a photograph with an overlap photograph I have I can view simultaneously then I get a three dimension in order to view the pairs of photograph this photograph here stereoscopically only the overlapped portions is we focus are important useful to get the real ground condition due to overlap each portion of the territory is photographed three or four times hence any picture distorted by excessive tilt or by cloud etc can be rejected without the necessity of a new photograph because I have overlap one more photograph I can take this one I can reject so due to tilt or cloud cover if one or the other for part of the photograph is not captured that I can discard and I have one more photograph where chances are more that I do not miss out. If the flight lines are not maintained straight, see our objective is to maintain the flight line and to photograph, photograph. But if the flight line is still deviated due to wind effect, we call drift and etc. Then it is not possible to maintain then we may miss out that area therefore to prevent such kind of loss 
the gap between the adjacent strip if covered then either by side life. So, this is very important. In the stereoscope examination, object can be viewed from more than one angle if sufficient overlap is there. So, then I will able to get the three dimensional view. Otherwise, I have to see only from one and that will not give much information. As yes, all this, we have to plan well in advance. One is the scale, I know the terrain condition how. Second is the camera axis is another. Then the flight planning is not necessarily only that much. I have to plan how much photograph I have to take, how much overlap I have to provide, what is the area I have to cover, what should be the exposure interval, at what interval I have to capture the photograph and according what should be the speed of the aircraft. All that I have to define, plan. Then only I will able to get a good information about the ground that I can prepare a map or whatever. Then I study. Now, since the photograph has a longitudinal lap, say PL, the actual ground length covered by each photograph is a 1 minus PL expressed in percentage. That is, we are trying to derive the formula to decide upon the number of photographs we require to cover a given area that is part of the flight planning. Okay. Since the photograph has a longitudinal lap of PL, actual ground length covered by each photograph is the ground length covered by L equal to 1 minus PL that is percentage of cover into scale into length of the photograph. Okay. This is L is small length of the photograph. The L1 is the dimension in the direction of flight, capital L, this. So, now similarly, actual ground width covered is the width of the ground covered is equal to 1 minus PWP. This is a side lap. P means overlap, W means perpendicular to the direction of flight. S again scale, W is width of the foot. So, therefore, total area covered, the ground area covered by each photograph is A equal to L into W. L is ground covered along the length, along the width, L into A. You can take a capital, here I have made capital, okay. One, that equal to along the length this much, 1 minus PL into SL into 1 minus PW into SW. That gives LW square L W S S square this is equal to 1 minus P1 into 1 minus PW. This is the actual length or area covered by an individual photographer. Therefore, number of photograph, this is the photograph covered by, uh, sorry, area covered by single photograph. If I know the total area and this is small area covered by individual photograph, how much area I, how much photograph I require? Say n is the total number of photograph I require, a is the total area to be covered, say 100 square kilometer, say, and a maybe 1 kilometer, 1.5 kilometer is represented by individual photograph. Then how much area I have to cover? So, L1, the dimension in the direction of light, L2, dimension of the area normal to the direction, is in the direction of along the flight, this is perpendicular flight. How much area? Say N1 is the number of photograph in each strip. This is one strip, one, two, three, four, five like that. And to cover that area, I may have one strip, second, third, fourth strip like that. So, N2 is a number of strips required. Total N equal to total number of photographs to cover area equal to the net length covered by each photograph that we know, 1 minus PL into SL. Therefore, the number of photograph in each strip, how much? N1, the number of photograph equal to this L1, L1, that plus 1 means 
plus 1, suppose a small area is left out. I have to complete that area. In this case, there is nothing like half or say 1.3 photograph, 0.3 meaningless. There is nothing like it. It should be next. Therefore, say next higher is 2. Therefore, plus 1 means we add one more photograph to cover this area both to have overlap and cover entire area. Therefore, N1 along given length, the number of photographs equal to L1 divided, divided by L plus 1, that is equal to L1, the 1 minus, this is the number of photographs I get. Similarly, net width is covered by L2 divided by WL, that is equal plus 1, that is L2 is given by, just now we have seen here this L1, L2. So, L2 is given by 1 minus PW, this is a side lap provided this is the actual area covered by an individual photograph plus 1. Thus, we get the number of photograph N1 into N2, this is L1 plus 1 into this is L2 divided by 1 minus PW into SW plus 1. This gives the number of photographs required to cover a given area. Let us try an example and feel the experience. Suppose the scale of an aerial photograph is 1 centimeter, 100 meter. There in the formula we have used this S, this is the scale of the photograph. Scale of the photograph is this one. The photograph size is 20 centimeter to 20 centimeter. So, size of the, this uh, scale, length of the photograph and width of the photograph, that is size of the photograph. Here we have used length. For example, here where it is, yes, W, this overlap, sorry, yes. Huh. This along length, this, yes, 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 where oh, I have come to the problem, yes. Sorry, this is width, this is L, length. L is in that give problem 20, width is also problem, in that problem 20. For example, see size of the photograph, L is also 20, W is also 20. Means this is a perfect square type photograph, not necessarily elongated photograph like that. So, Determine the number of photographs required to cover an area of 8 kilometer into 12 minutes. So, we have 8.5 kilometer, sorry, 8 kilometer width, 12.5 kilometer long area to be covered. If the longitudinal life is 60 percent, 1 minus PL we have said that is this longitudinal life is 0 60 percent, this is PW is 0.3 percent, that is 30 percent. So, N1 equal to, because these are all in meter, I have converted kilometer into meter. So, 12,500 meter divided by, that is the L, the total distance divided by 1 minus PL, that is 0 0.6, PL, that is 0.6 into the scale is 100 into size of the photograph that is S L 1 minus P L, this is L capital 1200, 12,500. So, that comes out to be 17 photograph we require along the line, along the direction of flight. N2 number, how many number of strips I require? This 8 kilometer I have converted into 8000 meter. One minus P W, W means side overlap 0 0.3, 30 percent they have given, 0 0.3 I have taken. So, this is scale again. So, this uh, side photograph width that is here 20 centimeter, length also 20, width also 20. So, I get 7, 6 point something plus I add 1, 17. This is 16 point something plus I add, I get 17. So, like that, so complete next number. 
total number of photographs required n1 into n3 that is 17 into 7 119 photograph I, I, I require to cover that area. Yes, accordingly the film and logistic everything I have to have. Now, I got how much number of photographs I require. Accordingly, I can decide upon the flight and, uh, speed and exposure interval, etc. This number of photographs. So, we can try some more problems in I have given only one or two problem here. You can refer my notes where some different type of problems we have tried there. Okay. Now, once I know, see I have to interpret the images. I got the set photograph black and white this. While interpreting the aerial photograph, I have to keep in mind what exactly things. Now, the shape of this, I have to keep in mind what could be this shape, the outline of an object like this. So, object shape is one I have to keep in mind. I know a playground cannot be of this, a lake cannot be exactly of this shape. So, depending on the shape, I could this be a stadium like? Yes, the shape is one important factor I consider in interpretation of that. Second is the size. This such a this much size. This is in a settlement. How this can this be a compound of a particular person? No, relative to the building, etc. Oh, this could be a playground or a bus stand like this. Thus, the size of an objective compared to the surrounding region is another point. I have to remember what could be this. I cannot immediately come to a conclusion. This is a small, this one when open space like that, I cannot such a huge place. How can this be? Or as I have interpreted satellite image, can this be a small field like? No. So, second is the tone brightness, if I have that is covered by a vegetation, what could be its brightness? If that is an open ground, what could be this? So, if this appears to be an open ground, could be a playground or a, something like that. It cannot be an agriculture field because the tone is very bright. Agriculture, I have vegetation, tone may be dull. Therefore, the tone brightness is another important factor I have to remember while interpretation. Then the site where exactly, if this is in a thick forest cover, I have this kind of things or this kind of things. Do I interpret that as a stadium within the forest? Is it possible? No. So, which area I am trying to understand is very important. On the other hand, if in a settlement, thick, uh, say city like Bangalore, can I have this kind of features like uh, the, 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 like this agriculture land? Impossible. We cannot have. Therefore, I must have the idea of the site where I am going to understand which area I have taken the photograph. Texture, the mutual relationship between this feature and this feature. What is the relation in the city like? This could be the road, this could be the building, this could be the building, this could be the school, this could be the playground. Their mutual association with this, with this, with this, how it looks like is very important that determines the texture of a photograph. Uh, just looking into the kind of photograph I will able to. Another important factor is a shadow. Shadow I have to remember in a city like Hyderabad or Bangalore, I am taking the photograph. I have my flight is here. I am taking the photograph of the ground. I am going here, 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 here like this and there is a tall building and here what happens? Although I have taken overlap because of the building effect here building, the light do not reach this part and they look dull, etc. Therefore, 
the shadow effect is either may because of the cloud cover or a tall building elevation in a hilly terrain if i am taking the photograph from this see this area and when i go this area this get brightened or if i have this area if this is the photograph and if this is the area if i have photographed if the camera is here this area brightly photographed this area photographed but this area very dull because of shadow effect therefore the satellite or photogrammetry photo i use i have to keep in mind possible shadow effect and how my picture look just because it is a dark i cannot come to conclusion that it has a low tone maybe shadow effect therefore shadow effect also have to consider association a feature like this whether this is found in a urban area like that possible a river across that you must have constructed a huge reservoir like you find so then i have to if it is associated with a river if it is not associated with a river in a city like Hussein Sagar Lake could be. Therefore, what exactly is this natural, etc.? Then a pattern of this agriculture area similar field, similar field, similar field, similar field. field. If you go to urban area, one house is like this, small house this, something like this, like this. In a well-planned city, roads are like this. On either side, we have regular pattern of houses like this. so this pattern how exactly it look is another important factor which we use in understanding the aerial photographs now i have a aerial photograph now we have digital photogrammetry satellite image all those both have the coordinates so long as it has a coordinate system i can use them to understand geospatial variation and i can make use of this to understand the earth feature more detailed way geographic information system is a software computer based software if this is a system it is used to capture this is a real ground from this ground if i have the photograph i can capture the information about the settlement about the river pattern about the soil type about the vegetation type water bodies etc many things are there i want to capture that particular alone only relief of the ground only vegetation only the soil i wish to capture only that we call layer that is people also call thematic maps so i want to capture those and i can store them any in a permanent record i can manipulate manipulate means i have a image this is a ground image i have got the photograph this may be the settlement map tomorrow i have to construct one more house or one more building like this how it looks like then this is a natural this uh, image i got now in the image i try to construct one then how it looks like in the real ground i can model i can imagine therefore no this is not good idea i if i wish to have here then how this looks like you know this is not good idea i wish to have this so how it looks like so this kind of imagination manipulation no no i want to cut this building not this height is required how it appears how it looks like so this kind of management and things imagination etc are necessary especially for planning and modeling and therefore i can manipulate instead of 10 acres of land uh, here garden if i have about only 5 acre how it is 
if instead of orientation of this garden, if it is oriented like this, how it happens? Instead of vegetation here, if I put vegetation here, what happens here? Or if I put vegetation, what happens? How it looks like? All that kind of information is possible. I can analyze them, manage and present spatially. This is the spatially here, here, here. Referenced means with a lat long exactly means then the reference or geographic data with the aid of a computer. Geographic data means I have a lat long, lat long this, we have so many. With the, that kind of arrangement system, I can present the information generated from the satellite image. Satellite image is one data which can give me the satellite imagery, the elevation I get from that image, the transport network I can get, the address of the building, etc. I can get in terms of coordinates, the boundaries of the building, edges, etc. If there are certain water body, river, ponds, etc., I can get survey control, I may have the soil distribution, anything plus I can add my data. So at the time of capturing this image, there was nothing like now. If I construct a building, how the image appears? This is our image. So I can add my data now. So all this flexibility is possible in a software, computer-based software that is a geographic information system software. Yes, GIS have transformed the way spatial geographic data, relationship and pattern in the world such that they are able to be interactively queried. Means I have water body and the land or road how exactly if I can change water body to road or like that, cut the road, extend the water body. This kind of information I can imagine that facilitates this kind of information, GIS, that can be processed, analyzed, mapped, modeled, visualized, I can imagine, and display for an increasing large range of users for right from the minister to our administrators to the villages to the utilizer industry everywhere it can be and for different purposes so that is what exactly the components of gis we have to have a hardware this computer we need to have hardware the scanner, the printer, these are all considered as a hardware part. So, satellite data or a topo sheet or a map or photograph, this is a hard copy. I scan it, that is a hard copy. Those are all the hardware part. We have the software, this. So, there are so many Q, the softwares available, QGIS, nowadays everybody talk about. Arc in Arc GIS, many there are inbuilt software like Erdos, uh, where I can process the satellite image as well as this GIS inbuilt system is there. Therefore, GeoMedia, there are several software inbuilt suitable to process satellite image as well as GIS functions or activities. So, these are the important. I have to have a data. Secondary data, primary data, I can generate uh, all those things. Then I process, I have a method to process, then I can communicate to the people based on their interest. These are all the components that is a people, that is hardware, that is a data and a software and a processing. So these are all digital data. So all those, I, these are the components. Where exactly I can make use of this? This satellite images find wide, sorry, GIS find wide application in any field you mention on the earth. So much land management, network analysis, 
So, incident mapping, spatial measurement, cord or whatever you say, we have the speed or topographic or demographic, engineering design, site selection, watershed analysis. You say any field everywhere GIS is now making its significant application, finding its application in any field. So, now modern geo tools or anything requires the use of GIS. But GIS do have some limitations. What are those? Data is expensive. I have to use some map or satellite image or topo sheet or something I have to use. Geospatial data is costly. I have to have a GIS first. A software I have to have and hardware to process to because software understand digital data. I have to convert my map into a digital data. So that they understand GIS. Therefore, I have to have those components that is a hardware, I have to have software, I have to have ground data, all those things. So learning curve on GIS software can be long. That is learn not it is a course, sorry, learning. I have to learn the GIS. Immediately I cannot use it. Today I have something, everything. I must learn GIS minimum two, three months to gain mastery over that. Several months I have to study. Once I am able to understand, able to use, slice it, generate different informations, yes. So software training is required that can vary depends on my choice level. So shows a spatial relation but does not provide absolute solution. This is relationship I can understand with water body, lay this road or building, their spatial relationship. But the solution, the software will not provide. We have to think. It is only, it help us to do origins in the earth science and computer science. In the application of this, how exactly this? Because earth science is one, a computer science is another, two different field. Those has to be converged. I have to integrate that. So in this spatial world, I have to make use of this and that convergence of this different discipline to understand and solve the problem, yes, we have certain limitation. Solution may not be appropriate for humanities research. Certain kind of field, this GI solutions may not be of. Although I say so many field, medical field, hospital, location, etc., solution may not be appropriate for humanities research, that kind of accuracy and completeness of attributed data. 90% accurate may be data when GIS perfectly, I have to, I have a satellite image. I have to georectify, I have to give reference to this, then it should able to understand. Computer has to understand digital data. I have a map of the ground, from that ground say I have a topo sheet. I have satellite image of this. Satellite image is to be rectified with respect to topo sheet. And then this I am using. The accuracy of this depends on how accurately I have georeferenced. So its accuracy of the GIS output based on the map depends on the accuracy of this. Accuracy how best I have georeferenced. Proximity versus Exposure, this is another issue concerns with the limitation of the GIS, sorry, GIS. Yes, I have geographic information system, it's a software. It has certain application, certain limitation, etc. Now, that itself is not adequate for us. I have to have another device to interface satellite data I take. I go to the ground, I observe some soil, some building, some water body, etc. 
but how exactly i bring that information to the ground and how to improve and generate a map i have a satellite image i go to the ground i collect some soil where exactly i have collected the soil from the ground how i best take interface that is i have to generate a supervised classification means i have an image satellite image i say this is a black cotton soil this is a vegetation it's a coconut this is a arecanut it's a paddy how exactly i say just based on satellite image i have to have a calibration or ground information we call supervised classification what is that i go to a particular area i collect the soil that soil i have studied it's a grain size it's a composition a texture color everything i based on that i say it is a lateritic soil i go to another side based on the composition i say color composition texture i say it is a clay in another area i say it is a sand in another area i say morum soil but another area where exactly how i have to show in the satellite image now the ground information i have to take it to the satellite i have to interface them and then make use of gis software to create a number of layers soil layer soil map vegetation map drainage map etc it requires a supervised classification for that an instrument called gps where exactly i have collected the sample that is the coordinate of that location that is a gps is an instrument that helps me to find out the location or coordinates of the place where i have collected some sample some information some data that works on the principle of geostationary satellite we have already said so gps is an instrument locates its position with respect to those geostationary satellites and those position expressly in terms of coordinates we call latitude latitude and longitude that is the sub samples or location of that area i take it to the laboratory now in the laboratory or in the field if i have identified this as a paddy field i have identified this as a granite rock i have identified this as a clay soil or black cotton soil now i have a latitude longitude i go to the laboratory i have that location where i have marked this as a lateral right this is the that location in the geo rectified image yes i mark this as a clay soil in another area i have marked this may be this area lat long i have here i have observed granite i have marked as a granite he another area i have gone there that point is here in the map i have seen this as a paddy field another area this is a coconut tree now this is a paddy field this is a coconut tree this is a granite this is a clay soil now look into the dna number digital number say this may be 70 wherever 70 in this map you go to mark it as a clay wherever this may be 80 wherever 80 is there you mark it as a granite this is there is a granite there is a granite this is a granite because everywhere it is 80 this is say 65% or 60% paddy field wherever 65 this is 65 this is 65 this is 65 these are all paddy fields yes like this we have the red soil wherever there is a red soil because and uh, dn number may be 90 wherever 90 this is this kind of soil it is morum soil morum soil because everywhere dn number now i generate a map i have checked the sample in the ground and their coordinates i have now i have brought this to laboratory and moved the cursor in my computer and to that point corresponding to that lat long and marked this what is the dn number i list out so 
then I will mark. But in reality, it hap so happens that I have to give 60 to 70 percent, 70 to 80 percent, 80 to 90 percent. Now, suppose a 70 is there. Do I classify heat here or here? Such question arises. There are, these are the complex issues we have again in the supervisor classification and likelihood and neighboring points they drag and generalize this kind of classification, reclassification, etc. are needed. Anyway, all those processes are possible if I have the ground coordinate system. That is GPS is one instrument which helps me to get the GPS has three different space segment control segments user segment. With the help of these, I am able to get the ground condition that is ground coordinates and make my observation and use the satellite image for generation of supervisory classification that I can use in GIS for my interest create a number of layers. Once supervisory classification is achieved, I want, people want to. I want a granite map of that area, wherever granite is. He wants only granite. Here is granite, here is granite, here is granite. Another person is interested only lateral soil. I want a map of lateral soil. Here it is. Yes, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Yes, this is a lateral map, lateral soil distribution map. Another person is interested only in the vegetation. Yes, wherever. Yes, here is a paddy, here is paddy, here is paddy, yes. He gets the map of his interest. There's a vegetation map, soil map, rock map, terrain map, anything we can generate. Those are all thematic maps, theme-based map. People interested only settlement map like that. So those thematic maps are possible once I have supervisory classification. For that, all that basis is, yes, this is the one which helps me. Yes, it has a space segment, so 24 satellites, 3 is minimum, as many as possible. We have said it's good orbit. This is, then this is generally 36,000 kilometer above the ground, we say that is ideal. Minimum 4 satellites is important. These are the requirement for function. What exactly the application of GPS? Just now we have mentioned the GIS. So also GPS has wide application wherever we go. Public safety, yes, people. Environment, yes. Resource management, yes. Resource age, yes. Aviation, yes. Military, yes. Local planning, surveying, recreation, business, everywhere GPS is we have in our mobile GPS, wherever I go, I am attracted, my movement is attracted by GPS, by some observer. Thus, GPS finds wide application, any field we mention, right from agriculture to a number of fields like marine, etc. And it's in, nowadays, in our vehicle also, we have GPS. But GPS is also subject to some kind of errors. What are those? User mistake. Possible, I do. Multiple interference, multipath interference, satellite and receiver clock error, orbit error, satellite geometry, atmospheric interference, selective availability, correction system, real time difference wide area augmentation system, all these products. What exactly these? I have mentioned n number of parameters. Suppose I take a GPS with me, I go to a ground, I get some. It shows a plus or minus a 7 meter, the resolution capacity. The same GPS, I go to some other area, I find a plus or minus a 12 meter. What is this plus or minus 12 meter, plus or minus 7 meter, the same satellite, same GPS? Because depends on the terrain condition, cloud cover, etc. See, my GPS able to get linked with 6 or 7 satellites. 
accordingly it determines its position and here it has able to interface or get link with the seven satellites plus or minus seven, six or five or whatever it may be, it's a resolution. In another area, because of the cloud cover, terrain condition, mountains, because the rays, etc., energy rays has to reach, there may be some kind of cloud cover. Only two or three satellites it is able to get linked. In that case, the error is high because it may be plus or minus 12. Plus or minus a 12 meter in one area. In another area, plus or minus 7 meter. In another area, plus or minus 9 meter. Now, those information I am taking, for example, where I have marked granite, where I marked agriculture field, soil cover, yes, all that have a different resolution. Then, whatever the information I generate, then it has certain limitation because of all this. In other word, GPS observation also has certain limitations. Those are all the errors. Whatever I do, maybe 90%, 95%, not 100%. Correct? Second, the inbuilt system, software system of the GPS. I have DGPC, differential GPS we have called global positioning system that is DGPS and ordinary Garmin made 10 or 12 meter plus or minus best is a 7 meter still other GPS have plus or minus 1 meter resolution we have accordingly we have different errors depends on the sensitivity of the instrument capability software inbuilt plus the ground condition atmospheric ground condition etc. There are so many errors in the GPS. Friends, now these are some different GPS model, how exactly. So, user segments and how to use it depends on the instrument make it is available, depends on that. We have master control station on the ground, monitor station, we have ground antenna, all those we have. These are the different space components and GPS receiver is the user segment. These are simple G, uh, GPS and how best we can make use of this GPS, G, uh, GIS, we can make use them in a drone or uh, satellite image application. Now what exactly the drone we shall study? Now we have discussed friends. GIS, GPS are two important data gathering devices to have interface. Satellite image is a data. Satellite image is a data. Aerial photograph is a data. What in the drone technology what we get is a data. Or G, uh, ground penetrating radar is another data. But to interface them we need to have the GIS and GPS. How? What is the drone technology? Now we shall try to understand. 